Welcome to part three of this Football Manager 2020 experiment where we have given Chelmsford City, a non-league club, perfect facilities and perfect staff. If you missed parts one and two, make sure you go and check them out first. It's been pretty successful and I'm really pleased that lots of you are enjoying this experiment because I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm finding it fascinating. And you join me in the year 2033 where Chelmsford City have completed their first season in the English Premier League and they have just, just about survived. One point above Leicester City, very close between the bottom four teams. They actually got the worst goal difference. But the main thing is they stayed up. An exceptional achievement for Chelmsford City, considering where they have come from, remember. Brilliant. They're only a three-star reputation club, so they'll be the lowest ranked club in the division. I'm sure they've predicted to finish bottom. Yes, they were. 1,000 to 1 to win the league. But there was quite a few teams there uh, 1,000 to 1 to win the league. So, but still, what what an unbelievable achievement to stay up in their first year. Mr Perfect still at the club, although he did move to Bournemouth briefly. I've moved him back. Now, I'm probably going to do a part four where I simulate quite, quite far into the future, 10, 15 years after this part three is over, and we'll see how Chelsea City get on naturally without me intervening. At the moment, I'm holidaying sort of in four monthly chunks, just making sure that Mr. Perfect isn't leaving. And if he is, then I'm moving back to the club. That's what I'm doing, because that's the whole point of this experiment at this point. But I think there's been so much interest in this experiment. Loads of people have been commenting, saying they've enjoyed it. Lots of likes, lots of views on the first two parts. I think it makes sense to do a part four and we're we'll holiday quite far into the future and see what happens to the club naturally without me intervening. So yeah, I did move Mr. Perfect back this season. But I think, I mean, all the other staff members are staying. The only the only uh, staff member that moves is Mr. Perfect assistant. He moves with Mr. Perfect, the manager, because of course they're they're tied at the hip, these two. They're brothers. They go they go together. He doesn't bring the rest of his staff though, interestingly. Anyway, let's have a look to see what sort of money they spent this year. So they did actually spend £33.5 million, but they also sold £25.5 million. So not a huge net amount spent in their first year in the Premier League. It's probably the first year they've spent more than than they received, actually, looking at it. This guy is only 16, and he's left the club. Um, 129 potential. Not, not the best player to come through the academy, that's for sure. He dropped down a division to the Championship. Now, one thing I have done is I've included a potential ability and current ability column, which is scored out of 200 on Football Manager, for those of you that do not know. I can include these columns because I have the in-game editor installed. I think this would be useful. Someone did mention it in, in part two, that would be useful to include these columns. I agree. So here we go. So you can have a look to see, this is current ability. So at the moment, Lewis Hooper, who has the highest potential, and Lee Paul Smith, who both have, oh, well, there's three players of 138 potential, actually. Uh, you can see currently where they are at. They could potentially reach this. So Lewis Hooper, Lee Paul Smith, who's 17, and Kyron Brooks, who's from K uh, whoa, Kittian and Navishan. That's his nationality. Remember, Chelsea City are spreading their wings and play bringing in players from all sorts of places these days. So there's a few players with, with a bit of potential there. And the under-23s, likewise, there's a, there's a couple players with decent potential, but they are slightly older, remember. And the senior squad, the best player at the club now is one of their transfers last summer. Th £3.6 million pounds from Spurs. I think he's a bit of a bargain because he looks really good. And he's worth loads of money already. Plus he's had a good season. 13 assists. The other player coming in, which was the, the biggest transfer, probably the record transfer for the club. £5.5 million. Pounds, Christian Tribolo. Not a very good season, though. Look at his average rating. That's really poor. But I suppose it's difficult when you're towards the bottom. As a defender, you're not going to get the highest average ratings, are you? Costa Rican with 81 caps. Signed for £3.1 million from Dortmund. I mean, the negotiation skills of Mr. Perfect Director and Mr. Perfect the Manager is exceptional. They're able to bring players in for bargain prices. Look at the, the loss that Dortmund have made on this player. It really is very impressive. And likewise, selling players, they're able to make a big profit. Because Emmanuel Johnson, look at this guy, signed for £3 million in the summer before the start of the Premier League, didn't have the best first half of the season, as you can see there from his average rating. But they still were able to sell him for a profit for £4.3 million. And remember, look at this, Sheffield Wednesday bought, bought him for 8.5. Jumps got him for 3 and then sold him on for a little bit more. 
So that is really quite impressive. Even after half a season and a disappointing half a season, they still made a profit on him. So they're, they're doing some brilliant work, uh, the, the backroom staff at Chelmsford City. So not a great season in terms of t- statistics, but we did have Stuart Nicholson scoring 18 goals for the club. He's been here for three seasons now, signed for 120k, absolute bargain from Leicester City. And his last two seasons, 20, 22 goals in the championship to get them promoted, 18 this season, 16 of them in the Premier League. And he's worth 27 million. He's a great player. He could go on to big, big things. By the way, Mr. Perfect is a legend. I haven't shown this for a while, so Mr. Perfect's a legend. We've got Will Ferry, who's featured heavily. He's, he's now moved uh, to Dundalk. He's been around quite a bit. I mean, he's a long time since he has. He only played for Chelsea City for two seasons, but he's on the icons list, which seems a bit overkill. Um, is there anyone else here? Stuart Nicholson's already on the favoured personnel after a couple of good seasons for the club. So... I think, oh, let's just check the cup competitions just to make sure they didn't exceed expectations. They got through to the fourth round of the Carabao Cup and through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. Let's move on to 2034 then. So it wasn't to be in the second season. Second season syndrome for Chelsea City, relegated with 29 points. Slightly improved goal difference, uh, but yeah, wasn't to be. Look at this, Brentford doing really well. They've qualified for the secondary European, whatever it's called, the Europa League like reserve competition that's been implemented soon. They're doing really well. But yeah, poor old Chumps had relegated back to the championship. Mr. Perfect, he wasn't sacked. It'd be stupid for them to sack him these days, wouldn't it? You can see all the managers that they have had, and some of them have been very brief, as you can see then. I've obviously moved Mr. Perfect back when required. Oh, he did move. He wasn't sacked, but he did move to Newcastle, and then I moved him back again. So he has moved a couple of times whilst in the Premier League. So yeah, but unfortunate season. Crashed out in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Crashed out in the third round of the FA Cup. Not a good year. This is probably the worst season in terms of results for Champs City. But it's to be expected. They're in a really difficult position. By the way, the stadium has been increased. Over the last year, the stadium capacity has been increased to 17,932. So that's good news. It's not been a great year, but they have improved the Marconi Stadium. If we just have a look at the finances and the facilities, plenty of money, as you'd expect, all that TV money coming in. Facilities-wise, the training and youth facilities have dropped down to 19, but they're still exceptional. Spending a lot of money on those facilities, but they're making enough money. At the start of the season, the stadium capacity was reduced, but by the end of the season, uh, it was up to 17,000, but they didn't... Oh, they filled it against West Brom. And Liverpool, as you'd expect, but not against Brighton for the last day of the season. Already relegated, I suppose the fans were a little bit depressed by that point. This is the formation that Mr. Perfect is playing, going with the 4-2-3-1 again, which is good to see. Nicholson had a really good season again, 19 goals in all competitions, 19 in the top flight, in fact. And he was the second top goal scorer, despite getting relegated. He is really, really good. And he's worth £31 million. Pounds. Bargain of the century, 120,000 quid. Unbelievable stuff from the board to bring him in if we just look at the transfers this season they did spend money but unfortunately it just didn't work out for them Jesus Romero 58 caps Colombian goalkeeper 8.25 million pounds conceded 69 goals in the Premier League but hopefully he'll produce it in the championship for them if he stays that is Um, Ica Pena Spaniard coming in for 7.5 million pounds Looks okay. Looks like a decent centre-back. We'll have a look at the full squad in a second. Look at the uh, current ability, potential ability, etc. A Bulgarian coming in from Chongqing. (laughs) Great name. In China for £7 million. So they've spent a bit of money. Not huge transfers though. That's the thing. And and the the record, well, the, the highest transfer going out was to Basel. Ben Waters, who... Came through the Arsenal Arsenal Academy, but once again, huge profit for the club. Excellent stuff from the board selling him. So this is the current squad. Uh, If we look at the current ability, best player is Mario Hernandez, who didn't have the greatest season. Romero's next, the the goalkeeper. So he's a good player. Uh, Tribolo, once again, not the best season for him, but in a difficult position playing in defence for a weaker team. Under-23s. No one really of note. Under-18s, 
They need to produce another player of like 150 potential. Try and hang on to him this time. That would be very handy. Fabulous news. Champs of City are back in the top flight. First attempt as well at getting promoted from the championship. They had some really difficult opposition this year. Everton, Newcastle, Leicester, Crystal Palace in the top five there. Norwich in there as well. Sheffield United, all real life Premier League teams. West Ham finishing all the way in down in 19th place. So Chelsea City might be the new team for to, for Essex fans to get behind. There's a lot of West Ham fans in Essex, but maybe now Chelsea City are up there. All the fans will be flocking to the Marconi Stadium, which is excellent for the club. And they went up via the playoffs. Like I said, really tough opposition. Everton, I don't know how they lost that playoff final against Chelsea City a couple of years ago with the, with the squad they had, but they did. Uh, Chelsea beat Crystal Palace in the semi-final. And then in the final... They beat Leicester 2-1 at Wembley. Chris Andrews with the first goal. Ami Obi with the second, a Nigerian international. Uh, they did get a consolation goal. They did have a player sent off, which would have obviously helped Chelsea City. The, the man of the match was our Colombian goalkeeper. So he's, he's made his money this year. If we just have a look at the squad then to see how they got on. Um, top goal scorer once again, Stuart Nicholson. Most assists... Was Francisco Scott with 12, must be a new player. Man of the match, Stuart Nicholson. Average rating, Stuart Nicholson. What a player. There's a theme here. Uh, the best player at the squad in the in the team right now is the Colombian goalkeeper. A uh, player with the most potential is Lee Jameson, although he is 24, so I'm not sure he's going to reach it. They spent, they spent £8.75 million on him this year. So let's just have a look at the transfers. Obviously, that parachute money would have helped, but they sold. Mario Hernandez, the best previous best player at the club. But look at the profit again. £23.5 million they sold him for to Burnley in the top flight. And he had an OK season for them. Nothing particularly special. So that is really good business from the club. He obviously didn't want to fight it out in the championship and they got rid of him. Philip Roberts, a player came through the Blackburn Academy. But look at the profit again. It's all about the profit. It really is. A sensational management of the finances once again profit for Tribolo who's left the club of course he's actually been capped by Isla I didn't notice that before but he, he didn't have a cup he didn't have a very good two seasons for the club did he so once again really good business from the club uh, the most expensive transfer coming in was Aziz Rakik for coming from China 12 and a half million pounds a Tunisian international but didn't play particularly well and he wasn't really a mainstay in the team either despite being the record transfer for the club this is a great name Alonso, a Portuguese international signed for 9.25 million pounds once again I, well, I suppose actually thinking about it was Rekic signed in January no he wasn't Alonso was signed in January then we've got Lee Jameson we've got uh, Marcus Albright a German coming from Bournemouth for 7.75 million pounds but I think they'll still make money on these players. They're big transfers for Champs City, but small in the grand scheme of things. Martin Martin. Great name. So good they named him. Martin Martin. <laughs> £5.5 million pounds for Martin Martin. You're getting, you're getting two Martins for the price of one as well. So that's, that's an absolute bargain. Uh, let's have a quick look to see how they got on in the cup competitions. Carabao Cup, second round. FA Cup. Fourth round, crashed out against Sheffield Wednesday. These are all the results. So not too many defeats this season. I don't think Mr. Perfect left this year. Oh, he did. I, f I forgot. Yeah, he le he, moved he keeps moving to Bournemouth. He loves Bournemouth for some reason. He wants to go down to the south coast. He's been there three times and I've had to move him back again. Bit of a bit annoying, really, but there we go. Can't do much about it. Up to three and a half star reputation. Rich finances. Facilities, still 19-19. Excellent stuff. We're, we're back in the top flight. That's the main thing. It has been a very successful first season back in the top flight for Champs City. They comfortably survived. 44 points, 14th place, 7 above the drop zone. Everton and Newcastle who went up with them. Relegated again, interestingly. So let's have a look, look at the club. Did Mr. Perfect leave this year? I can't remember. No, he, su he, he survived. He stayed with the club this time round. Three and a half star reputation still, so it hasn't gone up. Eventually got up to four, I reckon. We'll have a quick look at the squad then. So there's some better players here now. now. If we look at the current ability, the Colombian goalkeeper, still the best player at the club. If we look at potential, they've signed Alex Sanchez. 
from Norwich. For once again, an absolute bug. I mean, what are Norwich doing here? Signing him for £14.25 million pounds and not playing him and then selling him for half the fee. He didn't play much and he didn't play well for Chelsea City, but it is a bargain and he's one for the future, I think. Another young, relatively young player, 22-year-old South African international, signed for £8.25 million. Pounds. We seem to be going for Chinese players a lot, trying to convince them to come back. Well, not come back to Europe because he's South American, but trying to, uh, South African, sorry, but we're trying to convince him to come to Europe. But they seem to be pretty good at that, don't they? Going to China and getting some decent players. Uh, Solomon Ibrahim, a Nigerian international, also signed. He's You he might be the record transfer, actually. Let's just have a quick look at the, the transfers this season. Yeah, he's the new record transfer. Solomon Ibrahim, a right back. Not bad looking. Uh, second be second highest transfer this season was Thiago Neva, coming from Nottingham Forest. And Majola. So another South African coming for... Wait, is that the South African I was looking? I'm getting mixed up here. He is the South African. He's the one and only South African, Majola. I'm going all over the place. I've lost my place. Okay, let's go back. So they did actually sell quite a lot once again. Mitev, a Bulgarian, leaving the club. Oh, it's, this is like the first player we've not made a profit on. That is a surprise. I say we. I'm not doing anything, really. Steve Hockaday came through the academy, sold for £5.75 million to Burnley. Uh, he's got all right potential, but there's a lot of players that are able to convince these teams to, to sign that aren't really going to be Premier League quality players. Probably Championship quality, but not Premier League quality, I would say. Let's have a look at the youth teams then. So, oh, there's a player. Oh, he's on. He's he's out on loan. So he is a he is a Champions City player. This is the first one that we've seen for a while that's got over 150 potential. He's a goalkeeper, English goalkeeper, Ron Radoncic. 156 potential. They've still got Patrick Stafford. He's 23 now. You may have noticed him in the last couple of updates. Um, but he's not really improved. He's, he's not going to reach his potential. Despite the fact with all, with all these staff members that are really good and perfect facilities, it's just not really benefiting everyone, I suppose. And then in the under-18s, wow. This is the best player yet. Richard Coates, or Cotes, Coates, 177 potential just come through the academy this season look at this look at some of the 15 heading 15 determination positioning teamwork work rate decent physicals uh, needs to improve his strength as a center back but he's only 16 years old it's promising center back he's not well i'd say he is a wonder kid with 177 potential that is exceptional he could be one of the world's greatest Centre back. So let's keep an eye on Richard Coates over the next few years to see what happens to him. Just going to have a quick look at the history whilst we're here. That's what they've managed to win over the years. Uh, so obviously they've won League One, won League Two, they've won the, the Leasing.com trophy, the FA trophy. But hopefully soon we're going to see them win an FA Cup or League Cup because they've not managed that so far. These are the records. So top goal scorer or league goals is Stuart Nicholson who scored. He only scored 10 goals this season, but he's still probably the top goal scorer for Chelsea City this year. Let's have a quick look. No. Oh, it was. He was joint with uh, Mamadou Gay, Belgian, signed for £5.5 million a few years ago. Most overall uh, goals by playing one season. Will Russ still. He's, so he's moved to United Arab Emirates after quite a few years at Toronto. Very interesting. Glad he's still playing because he's a bit of a legend of the club. Uh, Lee Ball has made the most appearances for the club, but he's now retired. Interesting. He retired quite young, didn't he? Uh, played for quite a few years for Chelsea City. Moved to Tranmere Rovers. No one scored more than three goals in one game. Still got Chris Welpdale here back in the National League South. Youngest player, Christopher Barker. Where's he? He's, well, he was 20 at the time. He's just shows how far we've come, doesn't it? So he made an appearance in the, in the Vanarama South. Signed on a free for a Premier League club. Oh, my. Look at all the money Chelsea City missed out on. I wonder if they had some sort of clause in, in his, in when they sold him for free. Unless he was just signed. I don't know. I'm not sure what's happened here. But Watford signed him for £41 million. That's really interesting. He was capped at under 21 level a lot. But he just didn't reach his potential. Nowhere near his potential. I don't, he might have dropped off in the last couple of years. But £41 million for a player of 118 current abilities. Terrible business from Watford. He's not had the best career, really, has he? 
It's really interesting looking at these these young players that have either gone on to bigger and better things or, or flopped or just not reached their potential. Average attendance has gone up up to in fact they were filling it comp- every single game this season in the in the top flight by the looks of it. So maybe they're going to have to increase the capacity again at some point. By the way, this rent thing, 5% of gate receipts, Chelmsford do own the stadium now. In real life, they don't. I think the council own it and they have to pay 5% of gate receipts to the council. On the editor, before starting this this uh, experiment, I, I um, changed the ownership of Marconi Stadium to Chelmsford City. But for whatever reason, I couldn't find the rent option to, to remove. I just didn't know where it was. So they still have to pay 5% of gate receipts, but I'm not sure who to. I'm not sure where that money's going to. I assume it's going to the council, but they don't own it. So it's a bit confusing. I just I couldn't remove that for whatever reason. Anyway, uh, what else do we need to look? Let's move on. Let's move on to the, to the next season, see if they can stay up for a second season in a row. They've done it again. 13th place, one place improvement on last season. However, they did drop points. They're down to 38 points. It was very close, really, between the relegation zone and Chelsea City. Interestingly, some years they'd have, been, they'd have been relegated with 38 points, wouldn't they? But they they survived again, and once again, that is the main thing. They have stayed up. And Mr. Perfect didn't leave the club this year either, which is good. I think he's starting to to, to realise it's best to just stick with Chelsea City because there's going to be some godlike figure. I'm not saying I'm a god, but there's some godlike figure coming down with a giant hand, taking him away from Bournemouth, ripping, ripping him from the south coast from Sandbanks, and taking him back to Essex. I think he's realised that now. Well, they reached the uh, the quarter-final of the Carabao Cup this year, which is good. Good start in the FA Cup. They got through to the quarter-final as well. So quarter-finals of both cup competitions. So that's some improvement. Really good ends to the season to stay up as well. They probably would have been relegated if it wasn't for the last few games, to be honest. So that's an impressive end to the season. If we look at the squad at the moment, best player at the club is still Jesus Romero, our 28-year-old Colombian goalkeeper, 92 caps for his country now. Been a good servant for the last few years. Hasn't played amazingly well apart from in the championship, to be honest. But he is technically the best player at the club. Ibrahim seems to be doing quite well for his country and uh, all right for Chumpster City. Good current ability. Uh, Potential ability, of course, it's still Alex Sanchez, who featured a few more times this season, but not... Not um, an incredible amount of appearances and not the best performances from him either this year. But for a team finishing towards the bottom, it's always difficult to get those average ratings high, isn't it? Uh, let's have a quick look at the under-23s. So Richard Coates has moved up to the under-23s. Did play in the Leasing.com trophy uh, and obviously lots of reserve team games. It's up to 111 current ability. I hope he reaches that and I hope he sticks with Chelsea City for a long time. There's also another player of decent potential signed from Exeter. So now they're starting to sign players from other academies, nicking them for very low fees. And he's got really good potential. So they can either make a lot of profit on him or one day he'll be a really good player. Radoncic is still here, by the way. At the age of 19, now 156 potential. And then the under-18 squad. The best player here with potential is Matthew Roberts, who came through the academy last season. Uh, yeah, looks all right, doesn't he? Looks all right. We'll look at the transfers, as always. All £75 million spent and a new record transfer from China again. £19 million for this American international. Interesting. Centre-back. Will Wright from Huddersfield, signed for £14.25 million as well. So they've spent quite a bit of money, but once again, only £4 million net spend because they've sold Lee Jameson. They sold him to Spurs for 24 million. Brilliant profit again. Ah, absolutely fantastic. The Northern Irish internationals left. Alonsinio has left. Uh, so once again, a little bit of profit there. Not bad. Not bad at all from the club, considering it wasn't great. Martin Martin's been sold. But once again, profit. Doubling their money. More than doubling their money on Martin Martin. Francisco Scott going to Fenerbahce. Costa Rican international with... 128 caps, by the way, but he's once again profit. Won't look at everyone, we'll be here all day. They've sold a lot of players, probably most of them, for profit. Another 14th place for Chelsea City, up to 41 points this year. So they've established themselves as a lower to mid table Premier League club over the last three years, which is good. Really good news. 
Missed the perfect, still in charge. He didn't leave once again. He's still got all his other coaching stuff. But we've got a lot more staff members now. So loads of scouts. The club are starting to improve the infrastructure of the club in regards to the number of coaches they're allowed. They're spending more money on wages. Uh, if we look at the finances of the club, they've got huge amounts of money. Not as, as, not as much as a lot of Premier League clubs, but it is a lot of money. £88.9 million in the bank. Uh, a wage budget of over almost £1.3 million now, so that's good. They're competing with the other teams in the in the Premier League. Uh, fine, uh, the uh, facilities have gone down to 18 and 18, but it's still very, very good. Cup competitions this year, they got through to the quarterfinal, semi-final. Lost against Brighton in the semi-final of the Cup, so that's really impressive. Let's have a look at the squad then. Best player at the club is Majola. The South African that they signed for £8.25 million. Pounds. So he's he's improved. He's become a decent player. He's still got quite a bit to, to go before reaching his potential. But I don't think he's going to get there because he is 24 years old now. This chap also has spent some potential. Signed for £4.1 million. Pounds. Good player. They've got three players with at least 150 current ability. So that's why they're able to compete in the Premier League now. They've signed Premier League quality. Anyone with like 140 and over is a decent Premier League player, I think. I, uh, oh, have they sold? Nope, they've still got... This is someone else with 171 potential, isn't it? Loptak, yeah, they've signed him this year for £18.5 million. Pounds. 22 years old. I don't think he's going to reach 171 because he's got a lot to make up and he's already 22. But it... Oh, Alex Sanchez is still here. They've still got Alex Sanchez. Um, let's look at the youth squad then. So Richard Coates has been out on loan to Charlton this season. Well, he reached that. It's tough. It's a tough ask to reach. Under-18s, no one with real potential. Sonny Bryce came through the academy this year, 139 potential. Looking at the transfers then, £79 million spent. Javier Gonzalez, their record transfer now. Signed for £22 million from Bent Brentford. He only bought him last year. And other big transfers. Luptak, if we looked at. Pateri Timonen, Finnish international. Signed for £17 million. Once again, Watford only signed him last year. Chance of nip in and steal him. Uh, Rene Navarro, Spanish player, signed from Sevilla. So they're spending the money, but they actually sold more. We saw, oh, well, Lee Jameson's still there. That's because it was in June, so we can't really count him. Amiobi has gone. He's gone to Norwich. So once again, some profit. Kenny Munro, Scottish player, five, almost £5 million profit there as well. Not bad. So, yeah, really good stuff. He was the top goal scorer this year. Is Nicholson still here? He is, but he's he's not really starting many games now. So he's probably going to have to think about moving on. It's a shame he never got into the England team because he's, he's scored so many goals for Chelsea City over the years. Top goal scorer was Majola. Harry Wood as well, doing quite well. Signed from Leeds quite a few years ago, but has uh, developed into a decent right winger. Average rating, Ibrahim was top. Another solid season for Chelsea City. Tenth in the Premier League for Chelsea City. They've reached the top half of the table for the first time. Significant improvement this year. 51 points. Still a minus goal difference, but certainly a massive improvement for the club, which is really pleasing after three good seasons. But it's good to see them making some progress now. They spent £141 million. New, new record signing, Luke Coleman, an Englishman, signed from what for £28 million, rising to 34 Javi Unicosa, Spaniard, signed for £24.5 million. Pounds. And look at all these £20 million pound signings this season. George Roberts, they've really decided to, to try and improve the squad this year, haven't they? Welsh international, only 20 years old. Uh, player from Viteza, Latvian international, signed for £21 million. Pounds. So loads of money spent. Going out the club, they still sold players, Adele. Sifor going for £29.5. Massive profit on him. Will Wright has been sold. They didn't make profit on him, but they potentially could. <laughs> Maybe, just about. It's a really good season for Chelsea City. Top goal scorer this year was Majola again. 16 goals for the South African international. Assist-wise, uh, the Finnish international played well. And average rating-wise, it was uh, the new signing, Yavi Yanokosa. Is he new? Was he new last year? I know he was new this year. £24.5 million. Pounds. Played really well. Best player at the club is Majola, 157 Christoph Decker, an Austrian, signed this year £7.5 million. Bit of a bargain because he's actually the second best player at the club, according to this. 
uh, Soul, Spanish player, signed also for £12 million. So some of the, the bargain players are actually better. But then I guess some of them might have potential. So we've got Luptak still, Alex Sanchez at the top, Majola, George Roberts, uh, yeah, Yavi Yunuska, Yunukosa, whatever, however it's pronounced. Yunkosa. It's Yunkosa. I think that's what it is. Let's go with that. What's happened to Coates? Is he in the first team? Oh, he is. He's in the first team, but he was out on loan at Crystal Palace this season. So he is he is actually really improving, isn't he? Has he played for the under-21s? He has. Let's look at the England team, actually. Uh, Zidane is in charge. Interesting. These are the managers that England have had. Quite a few, actually. Some of them haven't, haven't lasted very long. There's been a lot of managers in recent years. Uh, Chelsea City don't have any players in the first team, but Matt Mills, remember, came through the academy. 32, 102 caps. This is probably the biggest success story of the Chelsea City Academy so far. I don't know if there's anyone else looking down. There probably is, but I just can't remember the names. Lazinio, great name. I don't know if there's anyone else. It's hard to remember, like I said, who's, who's actually come through the academy. The under-21 squad does have two Chelsea City players in there. There's Rod Radonjic, the, uh, the goalkeeper. Oh, Luke Coleman, who's actually 23 years old. Didn't come through the academy. Signed for £26 million pounds this season. So he might break into the, 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 the first team squad at some point. Oh, Matthew Roberts is at the bottom there, potential-wise. Um, but look at some of the players. Look at all this potential. Craig Ly uh, Lyons or Leons come through the Fulham Academy. So Chelsea's still got a long way to go before producing a lot. Oh, here's Richard Coates. The third best or highest potential of any English under-21 international. That's really good. This is the under-20s team. Uh, no Chelsea City players in there, I don't think. But then there might be players out on loan, of course, because it seems to show the, play the club that they're based at. Oh, there's a player in the under-19s. Tian Connor, 16-year-old, came through the academy last year. So he's in the under-18s, but a little bit of potential. So a really good season for Chelsea City overall. Cup-wise, they crashed out in the fourth round of the FA Cup. But it was all about the league this year and sustaining themselves, improving their league position, becoming a better team. And uh, it's looking bright. I'm hoping that they don't get relegated now. They should go on to bigger and better things. And they've done it. They've gone on to bigger and better things. They've qualified for the Europa League. And they were so close to qualifying for the Champions League. It's quite an unusual season because no one really raced away. Man United finished six points clear. But the other teams getting into those European places, it was incredibly tight between... Well, third place and Burnley in, in ninth. There was only five points between them. So Champions City unlucky not to qualify for the Champions League. But perhaps the Europa League is the, is the, a good first step for them. Up to four-star continental reputation, by the way. The key player is already Richard Coates at the age of 20. That is amazing. A player through the academy and he's already become the key player for the club at the age of 20. Remarkable stuff. Uh, transfer wise they wow look at all the they sold Majola for 58 million possibly rising to, to 65 he's gone back to China but that is incredible profit for a I mean he obviously was a very important player another player going to the same club in China for 31 million pounds only just slight slight profit there interestingly but still huge amounts of money come in 31 million pounds for Solomon Ibrahim as well another player make, making profit um, but they didn't spend a huge amount of it. Look at all these players that are making profit. This is the, my, the most commonly used word. I need to have a profit word counter in the corner, don't I? Uh, anyway, coming into the club, highest transfer this season was uh, uh, Stepan Holub, a Czech international, £23.5 million. Pounds. But all that money coming in and they just didn't spend a huge amount. But they still finished fifth. So they can build upon that next year. Look at all the money in the bank. Facilities, 1818 still, by the way. Uh, probably increase the stadium again at some point, I would imagine. This is the current squad then. So Richard Coates, 20 years old. He's already up to 159 current ability, which is amazing. Best player in the squad. George Roberts as well, remember, the, the Welshman that they signed last year is really good really good 156 uh, current ability we've got a swiss international who they signed this year for 18.75 million pounds he's only 23 151 current ability already reached his potential so he's, he's reached that uh crystal deck has also reached his potential an austrian 
probably helped along over the last couple of years by the Chelmsford facilities and staff members. So they've got a few players that are really good now. They've put together a, an exceptional team. Aura Kelv up front is the striker of choice by the looks of it. Russian international, 51 goals in 78 games. In fact, he's not the top goal scorer this season. Interestingly, not many goals scored despite finishing fifth. And I don't know if that's because they sold a player in January that was top goal scorer. Uh, yeah. And that, oh, that's interesting. So they actually lost two of their best players. Firstly, in January, Majola, who I presume was probably the top goal scorer, yeah, had 11 goals in 22 games. So he decided to go to China. And then in March, obviously outside of the European transfer window, they sold, sold Yunkosa, who scored seven goals and got nine assists. Uh, sorry, no, seven goals and four assists for Chelsea City before leaving. So did that have an impact on their results? Let's have a look. And we'll go down. Arguably, yes. So they lost the striker in January. They continued to do all right, to be fair. But after selling... The other chap, what's his name? I can't remember. Uh, Spanish player. In March, quite a few defeats, but one against Chelsea, one against Man City. Three draws at the end of the season, but they were against tough teams, to be fair. It was just a tough end to the season, I suppose. If we look at where they were, they did drop off. So they were as high as second for a three-game weeks. And it was only on the last day of the season they dropped out the Champions League place with that draw against Spurs. So that's a bit unfortunate, but it really was a tough end to the season. Combined with the fact that they sold two of their star players, it was always going to be really tough. In, in, in Romero, the Colombian goalkeeper, got the most amount of the matches this season in the in the Premier League. But still only got a 6.89 average rating. It's so stupid. Goalkeeper ratings. He's got nine out of the match awards and he still gets a six, only a 6.89 average rating. 12 clean sheets. Only 46 goals conceded. That is just ridiculous. Uh, they still haven't won a cup, which is a bit of a shame. Crashed out in the early stages of both cup competitions this season. Under-23 team, potential, 149. Jalusic on loan at Havant and Waterloo. What? What? Oh, they're in League 2, but that is still... A player who's 23 in Croatian. He's... Oh, that... What? This is weird. He's got 149 potential, but only 96 current ability. That's why he's moved to a League Two team. So he's a player that just didn't make it. Why did Chelsea sign him for 34,000 last year, though? They must have done some scouting, realised he had good potential, but didn't check how old he was. That's a quite bizarre player, actually. And another player, 20 years old, out on loan at QPR. Under 18's team, 155 potential. I'm not even going to begin to try and pronounce that. We'll go with Maria, 15 years old, and he sounds like an Asterix character, to be honest. Right back. Serious potential there. It's like it could be a really good player one day. What a season for Chelsea City. Well, let's see how they get on in Europe. It's June 2041, and Chelsea City have qualified for the Europa League for a second season in a row. Brilliant. And Mr. Perfect's still here, by the way. He hasn't left the club. I don't think he's left at all since moving to Bournemouth six years ago. Why would he? He's, he's managing an exceptional team now. But the biggest question is how did they get on in the Europa League? So they did qualify for the, the group stage automatically. And they finished top. They won five games against Dundee, Michelin, Monaco. They lost one game against Monaco and went through to the knockout stage. First knockout stage... Oh, they didn't. They, I think they had a bye through to the second round. It's the, the format of this competition has changed. They went through to the second knockout round, and they beat Dynamo six 0 on aggregate. Excellent performance. Quarter final, they were defeated by Wren, who were the eventual winners. Interestingly, if I just show you the rest of the results, they beat uh, Milan two one in the final. So really good, successful first season in the Europa League. Did they spend money? They did. They spent some of the money they made last year. New record tra transfer, Louis Baroud, a Frenchman, 27 years old, £33 million. Pounds. It's a lot of money for a player who's not an international, but obviously the French international team are very difficult to get into. This guy, Serbian international, £30.5 million pounds from West Brom. That's a big transfer. Not so many players leaving the club this time around, which is good. Belgian international left. Good profit on him. I didn't even realise Jumps had had a Belgian international. There's so many players now that have come and gone. It's hard to keep a track of who's at the club now. Richard Coates is up to 168 current ability, by the way. He's been capped twice by England 
and he's worth £44.5 billion. Still on a pretty low contract in comparison to some of the other big t players at the team. But look at all these players now. Brilliant current ability. Luke Cameron, 21 years old, signed for what a bargain from Carla. Now, this is interesting because obviously once upon a time, Chelsea City were selling players for less than this with equally good potential to Premier League clubs. It's now the other way around. They're, being, they're able to sign these players from League 2 and non-League the ones that come through the academy, at the academies, 160 potential. But he's already reached it. Interestingly, George Roberts, the Welshman, still doing well. Uh, Czech international Holub, he's doing well. If we look at the top goal scorer this season, there was three players, or two players with 19 goals: Luke Cameron and Andre Orokov, the Russian. Now, he was a bit of a bargain as well, considering how many goals he scored, assist-wise. Mironov, another Russian. Look how many assists. 24 assists. Unbelievable. And it's a really good transfer as well this season. For, 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 because look at the look at half the value of what Leeds paid for him. It's amazing. Looks like he's the highest earner at the club. But he's earned his money with sensational performances. Steve Smith, the goalkeeper, has uh, got the highest average rating. Which is unheard of for goalkeepers. Is it has the highest average rating? Oh, he only made three appearances. That doesn't really count, does it? Luke Cameron with the highest, really. Oh, I love this. I'm finding this so interesting. I could go on forever. I mean, eventually, Chelsea City might win the Premier League if we continue far enough into the future. The Asterix character, still below 100 current ability, but he's, he's only just turned 16, hasn't he? So he's very, very young. Did they win an FA Cup or... or Carabao Cup this year. Quarter final of the Carabao Cup lost against Spurs. FA Cup, they reached the quarter final and lost against Man City. So quarter finals of everything, including the Europa League. Bit unlucky, but they're definitely improving, aren't they? As a club, all finishes facilities wise. Ah, they're expanding the stadium again. So that's good. It's been reduced for the time being, but they are expanding it. For next season. So a third season in a row that Chelsea City have qualified for the Europa League. 58 points. Not bad at all. I'm not sure when I'm going to end this part three because I just can't stop myself. I want to look at the next season. It's that classic case of one more turn. Uh, how did they get on in the Europa League this year? Brighton won it. Wow. Um, but let's go back. They didn't win it. I can, I can tell you that. Unfortunately, they didn't win the Europa League. Let's look at the group stage then. So once again, 15 points. Beat Sporting, Montpellier, Ludogorets. They did lose once against Sporting, but they went through presumably to the second round, uh, where they beat Lazio 5-0 on aggregate. Quarter final, defeated again by the eventual winners, Brighton of all teams. That's unfortunate. So Brighton, four and a half star worldwide reputation. They're doing really well, aren't they, Brighton? On this, that's a shame. Mr. Perfect and his boys couldn't lead them to glory. For the second oh, quarter final for the second time in a row, a bit unfortunate. Maybe the other cup competitions are a bit more successful at uh, Carabao Cup. They got through to the semi final and they lost against Brighton again. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. And the FA Cup, they uh, crashed out in oh, what the hell? Quarter final of the FA Cup and the Europa League and semi final of the Carabao Cup. So unlucky. But they are improving gradually. And a new record transfer. Boo. From Brazil. £46.5 million. Is that an I or an L? I think it's meant to be an I. Surely not. Maybe Bulu. Or Boo. Boo. We're calling him Boo. World class midfielder, by the way. And Javier coming from Brighton. £5.5 .5 million. 33 years old. Bit of experience. Nice Spanish experience in the middle. Oh, he wasn't the second highest transfer. It was actually... Uh, Saba Varga from Hungary for twenty-four and a half million pounds, leaving the club. Uh, I don't know who this chap is. I don't remember them signing him, but they've made huge amounts of profit on this French chap. And also, a Ser the Serbian internationals left. I'm getting so I'm getting a little bit confused now because there's so many different players that are coming and going every single season. Chelsea City are just experts. In making money, signing a player, selling him six months, a year, two years later for huge amounts of profit. They've got £68 million. Pounds. I suppose they've been improving the stadium, which is up to 23,000 all-seater stadium now. Excellent stuff uh, in terms of the facilities. Oh, I didn't do this. They've paid for their own facilities to 
take them back up to 2020, 2020, 2020, which is brilliant. I keep saying brilliant. Sorry. Everything's brilliant. Richard Coates is earning 200k a week. Wow. <laughs> he deserves it because he's, he's, he's an enthusiastic centre back. It's always good to have an enthusiastic player in the team, isn't it? Luptak up there. I think we're probably going to end part three here. I'm going to do a part four where of a similar note, though, where I just gradually go through. And then maybe part five, I'll simulate far into the future. I hope people in, uh, have enjoyed this part three and it's not been too samey. But they've done really well, haven't they? They've qualified for the Europa League three seasons in a row. And I think before too long, they're going to be qualifying for the Champions League and possibly winning European competitions. So, yeah... I, I will continue a few seasons, I think, in part four, but I won't necessarily keep Mr. Perfect at the club. I think I'll just naturally allow it to progress now. I imagine a lot of these staff members will stay, but it could be interesting to see where Mr. Perfect actually goes next, just without me intervening. I don't think I need to intervene now. Even without Mr. Perfect in charge of the club, they'll be able to get a really good manager now. And they'll probably keep some of the backroom staff who are obviously exceptional coaches who haven't really improved their reputation, interestingly. They're still earning terrible amounts of money. I know at one point I was increasing their contracts. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think what I'll do is I think I'll increase their contract one more time, unnaturally, like put it up to 2047 or however. Yeah, 2047, I suppose, five-year contract. And then I'd leave it at that. And we'll see what happens. So I think that's what we'll do. Um, is there anything left to look at before the end of this video? Let's just have a quick look at everything. Uh, Mr. Perfect's still a legend. We've got Stuart Nicholson, who, oh, he's left, by the way. He left a few years ago, I just didn't notice. He left for £12 million to Newcastle. Did okay there. He's now moved to Nice in France. But he's a bit of a legend of the club. He's an icon. Richard Coates is a favoured person now, by the way. Affiliated clubs, having to Waterlooville. I suppose that's why they loaned out that Croatian chap. Did we look at the youth teams? I think I did when I was blabbering away. Not really anyone of note at the moment. There's a decent looking player. Oh yeah, it's the Asterix chap. He's he's still got the potential. If we just look at their history, they've still not managed to win anything, any major trophy yet. But hopefully that will come in part four. These are the records. Um, obviously, the average attendance, attendance has increased. Oh, Stuart Nicholson was one goal away from scoring 100 league goals, but he definitely scored over 100 goals for the club if you include club competitions. The best 11. This is the overall best 11 so far. So let's have a quick look at these players. Oh, Romero has left. He's moved to Toulouse for £12.5 million. At right back, Philip Roberts has moved to Coventry. He was playing for Chelsea quite a long time ago, to be fair. Richard Coates is already in the best 11. Two goals in eight games for England, by the way. And after only really three full seasons in the first team, he has got into that best 11. Alongside Oriol Sol, who's still a Chelsea City player and has been for the last four seasons. So he's obviously highly thought of. Remember, the last three years have been the most impressive three years for the club. And having a really good centre-back partnership of Coates and Sol has obviously benefited that. Uh, Lee Jameson, left-back. Only played for three years, but sold for 24 million, remember. And then he's moved to Fulham since then. And we've got the Austrian midfielder, Decker, in the middle. He's been at the club for four seasons now. So it's mainly the players that have been at the club in the most successful period. However, Andy Stockbridge, who, remember, played all the way back here, came through the academy, moved around a bit uh, in the championship, moved to America eventually. He's now an assistant manager, but he's in the midfield. We've got Luke Cameron, who only signed a few seasons ago as well, on the right-hand side, who's been capped by England as well. Two goals in eight games for England. The England team must look very different now. Slovakian international, Luptak, who's a guy with loads of potential as well. He's 26 now, to be fair. Uh, Majola on the left, still playing in China after three seasons there now. And Stuart Nicholson up front, of course. The most legendary strike at the club. There's a few other interesting names there. Lee Ball, you might remember. Andy Fennell in there, despite retiring fairly young. Can't click on Lee Ball either. Should have clicked the option to save him after retirement. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah, look at the England team. So we'll end by looking at the England team, who now has Inzaghi in charge. And uh, major clubs, by the way, jumps the city up here. Four-star reputation. Really good going from them. And the national squad has Richard Coates in there, Luke Cameron in there, 
Radonjic is in there as well. He's got six caps for his country, the, the Champs City goalkeeper. So that's really quite impressive. I presume... Uh, Matt, oh, no, Matt Mills is still playing. He's got 117 caps for England. Moved to Bayer Leverkusen. He's still going strong. That's good to see. But yeah, thank you for watching this part three. I, yeah, I'm going to do a part four. We're going to do a part four of a similar note. We'll just continue season by season, see how they get on for a while. And then maybe a part five when we holiday quite far into the future. Until next time, enjoy FM20. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.